the reason I changed the sequence, or asked to change the sequence of my two presentations is that we can skip some of the things here because I told you the basics already with the graphic, uh, with the inkability assessment. Okay, here we have some general data on paper for recycling. Uh, something about the, the test which was developed during this project. Uh, the results of the, the test, which is now a, a database uh, of results, then a draft of the scorecard and some, then finally some conclusions. So when you look um, on the material uh, flows in, in paper production, we have virgin pulp, we have non-fibrous material, we have paper for recycling, which is the highest figure of all, uh, resulting in a production in 2013 of 91 million tons in the CP countries. Uh, you have imports, exports, resulting in a consumption of 76. Uh, and that means 42% of that uh, consumption is graphic paper. 46% uh, packaging and the smaller ones is sanitary, household and other. That means the packaging papers are the biggest group and when you remember this gloomy outlook from Johannes Kappen, that will even be more in the future. Um, where does, it, the, does the paper for recycling come from? mainly from Germany, 34% of the European recycled uh, paper for recycling, uh, France, Spain, Italy, more or less on the same level, around 10%, uh, Poland with 4%, uh, rather low, but uh, from the new member states, the, the highest uh, um, the country with, with the highest amount of paper for recycling. Um, yeah, what, what do we have as, as challenges? Um, of course, that products are mainly made to, to have functional properties, um, but then we all want them to be good recyclable, and that means they have to be repulpable. The adhesives or adhesive applications have to be removable. And what you saw in the previous presentation, when it's a graphic product which ends up in a inking plant, it has to be the inkable. Um, the, the methods and the assessment behind, uh, you saw little bit of that one in the previous presentation, the inkability assessment according to Ingiri Method 11, um, and then the assessment by the scorecard of the ERPC. There is a second um, assessment which we haven't touched today. It's the fragmentation behavior of adhesive applications and another scorecard of the removal ability of adhesive applications. Um, and then on packaging, we are more or less at the beginning. Uh, there are some methods uh, from Articelka, from PTS, and also now a new one from Eco Paper Loop, and a proposal for a scorecard for, to assess the recyclability uh, of packaging. So first the test. When you look at the typical process on packaging paper production, you have the usual thing, the pulping, some screening, and then you have a fractionation. Usually you have then a short fiber fraction where with very little treatment necessary and you have a long fiber fraction which needs probably additional screening because most of the impurities 
go with the long fibers, and sometimes you have even dispersion and the storage. Um, when you look at the products, you, you treat in, in these treatment plants is that you have all kind of packaging types here with windows, with composite materials uh, for, for liquid packaging, with these uh, adhesive seals on it, as you see here, or even um, a long a long ceiling, so just either as a dot or as a, as a stripe or a, a sequence of dots to, to seal. And yeah, the question is which, which of these products are problematic, at least for a standard uh, treatment process? And that's to, uh, the way to assess is this eco paper loop method. Um, which simulates a standard packaging process, not as sophisticated as you've seen in the flow diagram. You have an, a disintegration, a defibering step, uh, and then you have a coarse screening, which gives you a coarse rechecked, which is one of the assessment parameters. And then, um, you use the accept of the core screening to assess the flake content, which is kind of a fine screening step, where you have the second parameter. You uh, assess the, the macro stickies. It's the same method as we use for graphic papers. Uh, and you get uh, a macro sticky result. And the accept of the macro sticky method you make hand sheets and you get optical uh, homogeneity or an assessment of the optical homogeneity, which is the fourth parameter. Um, the equipment here, you see the pulper, the core screening, and uh, these laboratory screens for flake content and sticky evaluation. And now coming to the results. Um, yeah, we decided to split the, the whole uh, field of results into several product groups, corrugated boxes, which is, I would say, from the tonnage, probably the most, uh, the, the biggest one in the market. Then folding box board in two subgroups for frozen food and for general applications, in bags, in molded products as egg cartons, for example, in paper sacks and paper uh, and sacks with composite materials, so with plastic layer in it, liquid packaging and others. Um, the parameters I just showed you at the at this flow diagram, so we can skip that. And uh, these are the results of the course rechecked for the products in the different groups. So you see here from the bags, it's, it's more or less you find everything from, from zero to more than 50% course rechecks. In the corrugated boxes, you mainly find zero and just a small portion of it have a rather high um, course rechecked. Same in the folding box board. Majority is at zero level. Liquid packaging is always a composite product that of course starts on a higher level and climbs up. Molded, similar to folding box board and corrugated, lots of samples with zero. Paper sacks as well. And then the composite sacks, of course, they start with a, on a higher level already. And here the, the averages of, uh, of these groups. Oh, no, this is a flake content, sorry. Sorry for being not as fluent, but I just had a chance to look at it today uh, on this presentation. Um, and with the range, what, what, you see, what we found in the test. So uh, flake content is in average between 5 and 20%. Uh, 
the highest one in the paper sex, uh, probably due to craft fibers. Um, and yeah, you see the range, which can be then sometimes be quite high, uh, even above above 60 percent is the maximum. Um, we have the, the macro stickies, uh, where we have lots of them, found lots of them in the bags, and uh, uh, definitely less in the, in the other um, product groups, but with some really high uh, maximum values in folding box board and in, in composite sacks. Yeah, and now the task was to, to convert these results in a scorecard. Um, we had some back and forth discussion, and Graziano mentioned it, uh, I think, today at the beginning that we had this public consultation. We introduced the, the scorecard proposal at the ERPC, which, where we had some more discussion um, and uh, and to be honest, we are really we are we are still working on it. So we we do not have a final version. What I can present here today, um, yeah, we said that there is one thing that the product should be assessed with the final seal, how it comes to the consumer and from the consumer to the collection of paper for recycling. Um, it was not possible within this project to get enough products uh, with the final seal, uh, because usually then you have to buy the product and just test the packaging. So when we get, when we got packaging from the packaging manufacturer, it's usually without the final seal because that uh, the, the brand owner makes the final seal on it. Um, we, so it's at the moment the results are a, a little bit a mix of, of both um, and we still have to figure out how we finally treat it. Then there was a big question, should we allocate the scorecard to all products, even those who are usually traded in group five, which means uh, group five, according to the uh, list of grades of, of paper for recycling, means those are special grades which also need a special treatment because that's a standard process, what we have available for testing. So do we get the right results and so on? So these are the questions we still have to answer finally. Uh, what is clear that it's not, the method is not intended to test paper which are intended for the inking purposes because there are different requirements. Uh, so the threshold and target values, even for macro stickies or flakes, or so, will be totally different. And then, yeah, we decided, of course, that the scorecard has to have um, one method behind. So it was, it is the Eco Paper Loop method one, and the Selkeming has uh, the German version of it, and we have to make sure in the remaining time of the project that it's really just a language version of the eco paper loop method one, that we do not have two different methods. And I think, Graziano, it's, it's just editorial work to be done. I think the content of the testing procedure is the same. It's just the way the, the document are built up. That, <laughs> Not for okay. everybody. So, um, similar to the assessment we have in the inking, we took these four parameters, of course, different parameters, made um, a maximum, uh, 
allocated a maximum score to each of the parameters to come up with a 100% total. And also here we have two quality parameters, which are the macro stickies and the optical homogeneity. And we have two process parameters, which are the coarse rejects and the flake contents. And uh, yeah, the idea was more or less uh, derived from the, from the experience with the inking scorecard to have it with threshold and target values, uh, and then having a recyclability score which can range from minus 100 to plus 100. Uh, with the table of assessment, which was more or less copied and pasted from the, the inking scorecard. Um, but yeah, here we, we were not quite sure. We said not suitable for use in paper industry. But on the other hand, if you think about liquid packaging, uh, which is used in the, in the paper industry, but in special processes, then we, we came up with a different wording, not suit, suitable for use in a standard paper mill. And so that we, we really have to finalize because that is when you have a, a very low threshold value. Um, uh, then you rather should have the assessment use a special process for this product because uh, we of course do not want to to uh, discriminate liquid packaging paper based packaging because it's it's a paper product and it's used and it's uh, and it's a composite on because it's necessary to be a, a composite, and so it's rather to find the proper way around that it's unwanted in a standard process, but there are processes which are intended to, to treat those papers and even, even make a, a valorization of the byproducts. It's not the aluminum, the plastic is not a, a coarse reject, it's a, it's a byproduct in that case. Okay, I think we can skip the values uh, that you can read it in, in, the, in the documents. Uh, and here we have, again, on this, uh, on, on this um, draft, uh, we have some ideas how the scores could look like. But again, this is under discussion, so I think we can rather skip that. Okay, so then, yeah, the conclusions from the market, you saw it at the very beginning, that paper for recycling is the, the major raw material, and the major products are packaging and graphic paper products. Within the project, we, uh, we developed the recyclability method. Um, Simulating the standard process, we have nearly 160 products investigated, um, but with a very high variation, which you saw on these uh, on these uh, column charts, uh, and yeah, we at the moment. We have this draft scorecard, but we still have to think whether combining different parameters uh, in packaging, combining it to one score is the best idea, or whether we should differentiate the assessment by a parameter. We know that for all paper recycling processes, Macro stick is, or a high level of macro stick is are an obstacle, but the what I just said with liquid packaging, the the by the level of byproducts are not necessarily an obstacle. So we we still have to do some talking and thinking how we end up uh, with that subject uh, within one month. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, 
to overcome the one of the problems of of recycling, which are definitely the stickies. Here one example, which at least one person does not like to see, is uh, here in the audience, but he's still smiling, so that's okay. Um, that you make a box by just uh, putting the, the different sheets together without using any glue for it. Okay, and thank you for your attention, and please, put all these questions to Hans and Saskia, who unfortunately cannot be here today. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Faul. I, I think you were completely wrong. Packaging is about content, yeah, not about the packaging itself. And yes. I, I guess he was smiling at the content. <laughs> Good, so as he said, um, to direct all questions at Hans Putz, that means he wants to escape from any discussion. No, no, it's, <laughs> it's okay if you have questions, just it, Do you them. have any questions? You can <laughs> step forward, entertain the audience, because <laughs> I need to um, put my computer up here. I have a question. Have you thought about um, making some simple guidelines for designers on recyclability for paper? So what guidelines they could follow? Yes, I think we have, but uh, hmm. yeah, that's also under discussion at the moment. We and we we fear that uh, the the project will run out before we really can can do that. Is that? Yes. <clears throat> if if an, if you do not mind, Andreas, I will add. Uh, few more things regarding the discussion we had. <clears throat> uh, I don't know how many of you have uh, really followed the, the public consultation that we had um, regarding this uh, scorecard. Uh, it was a sort of difficult uh, discussion because we, had, uh, we received a lot of uh, feedback. And uh, I have to be honest to say that uh, some of these feedback were uh, uh, quite uh, valuable and uh, <clears throat> that's why we are now in the difficulty trying to revise uh, uh, this initial scorecard proposal. <clears throat> uh, we will try to do it before the end of the project although there is only one month left uh, but most likely we will be able to do it completely only after the end of the project because now it's really the time is really is really strict. Uh, there are at least two major issues that we have already uh, tried to solve. One is the the one that that Andreas has already mentioned regarding the liquid packaging. Uh, to be honest, it's not only liquid packaging, but uh, all uh, the materials that are included in Group 5 of the EN643, which means basically all the composite material that uh, um, these materials, uh, these products, they do contain valuable fibers. The problem is that we can recover these valuable fibers only if we treat them in uh, specialized paper mills. So uh, basically the discussion is that we do not want to penalize uh, uh, these products as long as they do go uh, to uh, specialized paper mills and you can actually recycle the fiber. And I think this is in line with the part of the discussion we had today regarding the life cycle thinking. You know, it depends where uh, you recycle these products and if you are actually capable of uh, uh, doing an efficient recycling back uh, in, into a new, into a new product. So um, this will definitely be fixed, uh, looking at uh, a different definition of uh, those products that will fail, because some products, of course, uh, will still fail uh, this test. Otherwise, there is no meaning to, <laughs> to produce uh, this, uh, this uh, scorecard. But on the other hand, uh, we, uh, we, we need to adapt it in order to have a meaningful scorecard that uh, 
in principle, must be useful to improve the eco design, not to, to discharge uh, uh, any process. We want to improve the eco design of the product. We, we want to give a tool uh, to the packaging producer in order to be able to use it and put on the market uh, uh, products that uh, can be recyclable in a standard paper mill, on a specialized paper mill, but uh, and this is also part of the discussion we had on extended uh, producer responsibility because it depends where these products will go in the, in the end. One more, mar one more thing uh, regarding one of the parameters, the flakes. Uh, I don't know how many of you are uh, really familiar with uh, this uh, technical <laughs> uh, discussion, but anyway, one of these parameters, uh, we decided that that was not uh, uh, really um, uh, so important as we thought in the in the beginning when we discussed it and then uh, uh, that's why Andrea said okay maybe some of these parameters will have uh, a different calculation and uh, uh, and it will be considered different it will still be in it will still be in the scorecard but uh, it will be treated differently because uh, uh, in the case of flakes uh, the paper mill can just uh, add one single step in order to uh, uh, to to break these fiber bundles that are that are named uh, uh, flakes okay i hope i was not too much uh, Technical. I hope you understood at least that we have uh, this uh, ongoing discussion, and uh, and we 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 will still need some uh, feedback from the paper value chain because we really want uh, this tool to be used in the paper value chain. Okay. Okay. Um, maybe one comment and one question. The first is a comment. So the packaging. Uh, Mr. Put shows it's not really an issue because closing the packaging is only 5% of the job of the adhesives. The real 95% is to show temper evidence that nobody has manipulated the package before, that it is really sealed before you open it first time. This is the real issue of adhesive, not to close something. Closing is easy. So, and therefore, you will always find adhesive for the second 95% of the job. Um, so the question is, you mentioned the, the test method, uh, 480 gram of the packaging material. Uh, and you mentioned it also that very often you find different adhesive application on different places on the package. So if you have a big cardboard, maybe for a TV set or for a computer, whatever, uh, the package maybe will be one kilo or two kilo, but the adhesive is on one spot <laughs> on the edge. How do you manage, how do you manage that uh, you find the right portion and not to find 480 gram without any adhesives, <laughs> or to put the adhesive. <laughs> yeah, sure, but this, but this is but this is unfair. <laughs> oh, how do you manage this? <laughs> no, the uh, the answer is quite simple. Actually, the first part of the method uh, implies that you s you you separate the 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 other end uh, parts of the packaging and then uh, uh, you make the right proportion based on the weight so in the end uh, you will have an homogeneous product okay so i think you calculate yes then you to the yes of course packaging. of course that's the second step so in the end uh, you will have uh, a very homogeneous result <laughs> <laughs> any more I was causing the problem myself. Um, the chemical compounds, which you don't separate with these kinds of uh, uh, analysis, but the can, they can pre uh, prohibit the recyclability. For instance, the mineral oils, which limit the uh, application in, in food packaging, for instance.
Okay, you, you are perfectly right, but we did not take into account this aspect. The, 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 the assessment is done only at the technical level, and it doesn't take into account the, chem the chemical substances. So what we test in the, uh, with the method is just the possibility to repulp uh, uh, without getting uh, uh, major constraint in the, in the paper recycling process, but the chemical uh, substances are not considered. Uh, uh, I would say that it's, uh, uh, it's a completely different test that can be done uh, and uh, it's, of course it is a requirement, it depends on uh, the type of packaging products, so, but it's not included in the test. Okay. Any more comments or questions? <coughs> Uh, I'm representing Polish uh, liquid board producers uh, and also cooperating with um, ACE organization from Brussels, Alliance for Beverage Carton and uh, you know them, I hope. And um, I just want to make a, a comment or a statement that uh, the intention of our industry was never ever to develop recycling of uh, liquid board in uh, every or any paper mill. Uh, it takes uh, specialized equipment or a slightly modified uh, regime, technological regime, to successfully develop this type of recycling. So I'm gladly welcome your note that uh, it should be somehow uh, taken out from uh, general uh, comments. Yeah? So it takes a slightly different way, different approach. Yeah, thank you for that. more then thank you very much again and i hand over to axel now